Hi, I'm Randall. You might know me as... Randy. Randy, where are you? Randy. Randy. Yeah. Hang out with Captain Q long enough, and you'll end up buying a boat. And I'm no exception. So join me as I navigate the ups and downs of owning an old sailboat. to have the original hand-typed 1973 through-haul list on the shield letterhead, which makes me a little bit nostalgic. I know that I'm the fourth owner of this boat and I feel like it's kind of an honor to be a steward of something that's got a history to it. And so I feel like, okay, it's my turn to maybe make some enhancements, maybe modernize it a little bit, make it more comfortable. Before we get too far ahead in talking about the through holes on this boat, it might be a good idea to talk about what a through hole is. Uh, on our show, we talk a lot about through holes when we're looking at the hull. And through holes essentially are referring to holes in the boat. And specifically, the through hull is a fitting that helps you control fluid in or outside of the boat. So, for example, you might want to have uh, seawater coming in to help cool your engine. Uh, you might also push out fluids like, um, let's say, from the head. You might have uh, your holding tank uh, with the ability to discharge over overboard. Now, keep in mind, we, we don't do that unless you're three miles or, or more offshore. Um, but you might want to have a through hole where you can pass fluid through the hull. So basically when designing the boats, one thing you want to keep in mind is the location of the through holes, the size of them, uh, the number of them, like on this boat, which is a lot um, because it's also a point of vulnerability. So if you think about it, basically we're gonna drill. If you were designing the boat and building it from scratch, you would build the hull out with the fiberglass in like this boat, which is, you know, this thick. And then you would have the um, manufacturer uh, drill an actual hole right in the, in the hull. And so a hole might look like this. And for those of you looking for reference, this is the thickness and the number of layers of the fiberglass in this hull. So it's about, uh, it's right around one inch thick and it's all solid fiberglass. So when you drill a hull in, then you are going to put in your through hull fitting. Now the fitting is quite simple. Um, this would be the outside facing one. So this is what we look at when we're looking at the hull. Um, it's got a threaded neck to it and then a tightening nut flange assembly. So basically the hull would sit here. So you think about, this is my hull. I've drilled a hole and now I'm just going to cinch it down until it squeezes the hull. Now we are going to put some, um, what we call 3, 3M5200, which is a marine sealant. It's a silicone sealant that's incredibly uh, tenacious and impervious to water. So um, you'll hear people refer to it as 5200. Uh, that's kind of the go-to for marine sealant. So you put marine sealant on the inside of this lip and then um, clamp down, and then you've got your through hull. So now I've got a hull with a hole, uh, a flange on the outside. In order to control what happens on the inside, I'm gonna put a seacock valve um, at the end of this through hole. So on the inside of the hull, I now have this Let's say I have this mounted into my hull. It's poking up through the hull. I'm going to screw this on like so. Okay. So now I have a through hole and I've got a valve to control whether I can turn it on or off. So this is the off position. Um, and the one good way to, one thing to keep in mind is usually the open position is in line with the direction of the flow. So in other words, that would be with the direction of the flow and this would shut it off. Now this is called a ball valve, and if you wanna see why it's a ball valve, you can see on the inside here, it's actually a round shape. Let's see if I can get that. Yeah, Ooh. so as you, as you close it, you can see there's a dome shape to it, and it closes it. Okay, so now I've got a through hole. I've got a valve where I can shut it off to make sure that nothing's coming inside. What if I actually want to attach it to something? So I put on another fitting here, screw this in, and now you can see I've got a, a ridged fitting here, which a hose will slide over. 
The hose would look something like this, except this one is about 5,000 years old and is crusty and inflexible, so this is just before it's gonna end up in the dumpster, but um, what we wanna make sure, the, the one point here is that when you put this hose over this final piece to bite onto these ridges, that you wanna have two um, clamps. Um, so this, this would reside up and inside the tube. You have two clamps down. So not only is it biting on the ridges here, but it's, it's got two clamps for safety. These are bronze, um, which is, are great. They're extremely heavy, uh, impervious to water. They're, uh, I shouldn't say totally impervious to water because um, there can be some corrosion, some wastage over time. So, you know, for example, this boat, I'm gonna be taking a look at the through holes this year just to make sure that everything looks okay. Um, there are plastic through holes. So you might use these on a simple external uh, use case. So let's say I have a bilge pump or I have a shower sump that is uh, discharging overboard, but it's above the water line, so it's not as critical. Um, I might use a plastic one. This one being bronze, this one being plastic. This one is about $18 and this one is about 55. So triple the cost and these are both pretty small. So the bigger you get, the more expensive they get. That's through holes in a nutshell. I think, um, what you'll see on this boat is that there are a lot of bronze ones. And most of them have a, a nice shut off seacock valve, uh, ball valve. Um, they don't always operate smoothly. So that's something I've got to figure out. Maybe some lubrication, some WD-40 or something. Having inherited 23 through holes, really what I want to look for is corrosion, uh, wastage. So the meaning uh, if some of the, the metal is eaten away. We did hear a story at Yankee Marina about a beautiful boat that had the through holes let go. They put the boat in the water a couple days later, started taking on water, um, and they had to quickly yank it out of the out of the marina and get it inspected. So um, on the PB, we also had an issue with uh, a hose coming loose. So there was a deck drain that actually went into the hull of the boat and then out a, a through hole. The clamps had come loose and so the hose had slipped off underway. So basically any water we were getting on deck was going right into the boat and into the bilge. So we heard about that through the um, bilge alarm, which went off at about 2 a.m. Um, and I think that's actually a really great lesson because you just never know when you're going to be taking on water and then you're going to want to know quickly where it's coming from. So that's really the main point here. Safety is really the main concern when it, when it comes to through holes. That's why when you own a boat, you should know exactly where they are, what they're for, how to get to them quickly, uh, and make sure that there's a plug right nearby. That's the other part of this too, is that um, when you have your through holes, you want to make sure you have your plug sandy. So this is a little tiny baby plug, um, but you would tether this to the through hole uh, in case something happens to it, let's say, you know, something something hits it and the, the 5200 sealant comes loose and so there's water gushing up in it. The idea is that you're able to identify the hole, you know, pound that in if it's in coming in through this, this, uh, or if the through hole is actually damaged and it's not there. If you have a hole in your boat, you're going to want to have a bunch of plugs handy and tethered to the actual hole uh, so that in... A, a pretty quick time you can stop water from coming in. So good rule of thumb, keep more, keep the water out of the boat as much as possible. Now you can follow me, go through and find the various through holes in this boat. It's not easy on this boat. Uh, there's a couple that are still a problem. I, I've owned the boat for a year and it's still an issue. So uh, that's something I've got to solve before, uh, before the season gets underway. To get started, I'm gonna take the Captain Q's marching orders, which is get to know your through holes. And so I've got a list. The list uh, has more than your average number of through holes. Typically you probably see 12, 13, 14. This has 26 through holes. So it's, um, it's a bit of a beast to get my head around. Like, where is everything going? What is it doing? I'm just gonna count them off. So one, two, three. Um, that looks like a depth sounder. Uh, four, five, six. Got our grounding plate for electronics. We've got our centerboard pin, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We're getting close. 
I guess we can call this one that 18 in the back exhaust. 19, that's a big one. 20, uh, here's a bigger one down here. We've got 21, I've got my speedometer here. <laughs> All right. Aha. All right. So that's so that's uh, 22, 23. That is incorrect. Try 24 and 25. I've got to figure out which ones on this list maybe are obsolete. Maybe there's a couple of them that have been uh, capped off and closed. Back in the main cabin, we've got all the stuff out of it, pretty much. So I've quickly identified one, two, three, four, five, six, six of the 23 through all. So I'm about 25% of the way there. I feel a little bit unsure, like I don't have an ex I'm not an expert at this, and so... Um... Me? I don't know, I, I, I'm sorry. This is actually shot on a month apart. So there was a bit of a rush to find them and then get back home at a decent hour and that just didn't work. It was too much of a time constraint. And so I guess one thing I would say about owning a boat is, you know, make sure you have the time, make sure you have the, the proximity to the boat to be able to spend on it the way that you want to it. Uh, for me, it's been a little bit frustrating to not be close enough to it, to be able to jump over and work on it, do the things that I, I have on my list. It definitely inhibited my ability to work on it and make progress. So a little bit of frustration kind of crept in because I, you know, there would be weeks that I would go by and I wasn't able to get on it. I ended up only being able to find five before I had to get going. So there's 23 in total. There's, I think, 19 on starboard side. There's four on port side. I'm just gonna go through it and, and try to find and see if I can actually locate all through hulls. So this is my first one right here. Um, and I don't know what it goes to. I know that in the notation of the boat, one of them has been plugged. Um, this is my second big one that comes back. I believe it's from the head. And then there's one behind that, which is uh, a little more patinaed, and that's a bigger one. So those are my first big three. And then I've got, I've looked at all these cabinets, um, and I know there's a vent one here. For Rande, that is incorrect. It is these two right here. And these are in the starboard um, cabinet for storage. So that gets me to, I think, five. And we have one in the head. And it's way in here. This one also is pretty patinaed. So there it is right there. Next up, I've got these. Got one down here, which is actually also here's my sump pump right here. So this comes from the head, um, and this is the sump pump. Sump pump is basically an area for gray water that comes out of the shower. So if you have, you know, hair, etc., you can trap it before you send it overboard. And also, you don't want to clog your lines with that. So it's a it's a basically a clean out filter for your shower and gray water. So I've got one down here with this black ring on it, no bong, so that's gonna need a bong. This is not easy. It It's actually a little bit of sleuthing and it's kind of surprising how inaccessible some of these are and actually just even finding them. So I got a nice big one here with the seacock and everything. Great, love it. Um, except then beneath two layers of shelving, I've got one here forward and then the other one is more aft, I think, right? Yeah, it's right there, both kind of patinaed. But, I mean, this is beneath two layers of shelving. You can see the little um, shelving feet there. Let me see if I can just try, if I can actually jump in and do it. So, pretty glad I didn't have a lot to eat. All right, mind you, I'm out at sea getting thrown around, we're taking out water. All right, I can barely fit my hips through at an angle. I'm gonna grab this light. I can touch the top of it, but actually like wedging a bung in there would be really problematic. 
Um, so I don't love this from a safety perspective, like that bung, I, I have to see what that is for, but the placement of that's really awkward. I wonder if there's a better hole that can be cut or if I can go in under the galley stove. Next up is crazy, another crazy one. This one was labeled as under the freezer. What do we see? So, what do we see is that guy. Uh, and it's a through haul. Kinda? I don't know. What do we think that is? It's grounded. Mm, it's right under the freezer. Is it a, some kind of depth sounder? Uh, I don't think so. I already got those mapped out. But um, I'm going to skip putting a plug on that because it looks like it's pretty permanent and I can't quite reach it either. So I've got one on the port side here according to my little sketch. Um, I think if this is might just be the depth sounder. Yep. So there's that one. Definitely through hole. So coming aft, got the engine. Right. We've got a big boy down there. See him? Right there. Um, I believe there's one in here. There we go. Yeah, it's about me height. Real easy to find. Um, there we go. And that's in the port side. That's one of the port um, clothing lockers for the aft cabin. Now it gets a little dicey. And here we go. We're going into the engine room and through the after head. And we go. All right. So a lot going on here. So we've got these one, two, and that one is plugged. Um, I think that's the only two on the starboard side. Oh, nope, sorry. There's the other one down here, right here. All a little patinaed, and then the fourth one there, right there, just to the right of the red filter. Next one is really hard to get to. This ought to be interesting. What you can't probably see is it's way, way down. I'll show you exactly where it is. It is in the depths. Alright, I will try to highlight it. Can I get an angle on it? Uh, yeah, it is not easy to get to. That is freaking impossible. What is it? There's one right here. This is pretty easy. Nice, a big one. So now we're in the aft head. Nice, big one. Seacock, pretty patina. Um, and here we go. The floorboard in the head, in the aft head. There is one down here. <laughs> I don't know if I can see it even. All right, here we go. Under this panel. Ugh. I don't know how to do this in an emergency. Here we go. It is right there. Much easier to get an iPhone in there than your head, actually. <laughs> oh my God. This is, uh, that one's actually not too bad in emergency. I think you can get to it. I think there's one more over here. Yep, yeah, right here. Right here, I've got there, right behind the aft head hopper. Um, so I think that puts me at 21. I think there's one under here. There we go. I've got one more I gotta find. Ah, we've got our shower sump. There's another sump just for those of you. Like that. Alright, let's see what we can go here. 
Nope. Ah, there we go. So there it is. Yeah. Oops. Sorry. All right. There it is. A lot to figure out. A little overwhelming. Uh, okay, so I think that's it for the through hole assignment. If you have an idea about how I could make things better or consolidate it, feel free to drop me a comment. Any ideas are much appreciated. Thanks for joining in and, and coming along with me. Mm -hmm.